Hey hey flappers, welcome back. Today we are talking about player engagement, and I'm gonna put it bluntly, it sucks to watch your players lose interest in your D&D session. And I say that as someone who is terrible at paying attention to anything. Part of the DM's job is to maintain player interest, and when you can't accomplish that goal, it's hard not to take it personally one way or another. Typically, one of two things happens. The DM either blames themselves or the players. And ultimately the blame rests on the infinite number of external factors that affect each individual and their lives. I had a player literally fall asleep at the table. Like we had to wake them up in order to get them to respond. I blamed myself a lot. And I blamed the player quite a bit too. But the truth was that the player had to work late and he didn't want to miss D&D because he knew that it was important to us, the rest of the group, and it was important to him. He just couldn't stay up anymore. I mean, many of the things that we do are a result of our circumstances as human beings. As a DM with ADHD, I often have to ask players to repeat the thing that they just said. Like, a lot. Some people need to zone out and take a mental break because two hours of total attention is not a possibility for them. There are a lot of problems that result from external circumstances, but the biggest problem is the toll it actually takes on the DM. When my players have a hard time staying focused, it tends to draw my attention to the weaknesses that I have as a DM. And whether or not the fault lies with the players or me or with something external, a lot of times it falls on the DM to sort of pick up where other players are feeling like they're not in it. DMs, you know what I'm talking about, you've been at that table. One encounter with a distracted, unhappy, or I guess sleeping player can really take the wind out of your sails as a DM. So flappy you smart cookie you say? How do you solve a problem that's mostly external? First of all, yes I am very smart, thank you. Second of all, have you liked this video yet? Because when you do, it helps the video get out to more eyes and therefore it can help more people. So you'll be doing me a big favor if you just click the good thumb down below. Third of all, you can only solve the problem within the confines of the table. You can't fix their real life problems. You can't make them fix their real life problems. All you can do is make the table a more engaging place to be. And it's one of those things that you learn more as you DM over time. You pick up these little tricks that are going to help get people sort of back into your game. I have clocked the hours for you and I've come up with five house rules that will actually improve player engagement. The key to these house rules is that it understands that players need that attentive reprieve and it directs them to to the character sheet or some aspect of the game rather than directing that idle attention to their smartphone or social media or what have you. Here they are. Number one, additional skill proficiencies. As DMs, we're often looking for which skill seems to best fit a skill check and often we don't consider the idea of introducing new skills. New skill sets for characters can bring them to become interested in seeking out ways to use these skills and therefore they'll be more engaged at the table. They might even seek out scenes so that they can use this specific skill. Let's say a player visits the bar pretty often, has a backstory related to a bar. You could introduce pub crawling as a skill which could apply to calming down drunk people, which would be a charisma check, playing darts, which would be a dexterity check, or holding one's liquor, which would be a constitution check. Adding to those skills, the second house rule that I want to implement is training, or the ability to gain specific skill set being within a player's grasp. If you're giving your players an incentive to interact with the world and improve their character, those gears will start turning in their heads, and when it's not their time to be in the spotlight, they'll have plenty to think about. If you're going through a rather boring travel phase or something like that in your campaign, your player might want to improve on some skills while they're on the road, like maybe a geography skill where they've bought some maps and they spend some time looking at them and understanding how they relate to geography. Now they have a skill that they have trained and been able to gain a proficiency in in their downtime. And then doing a geography check will be a lower DC check than say just doing a survival check. Okay, moving on to a rule that some people might not agree with, but here goes. Number three, improvising spells. If you know the firebolt can 
cantrip, why wouldn't you be able to at least try to light something on fire with it? Same with Frostbolt and trying to set up some little ice planks that you can cross a river with. A simple arcana check can allow you to improvise a spell based on one you already know and have prepared. Offering to cast it at a higher level should lower that improvisation DC. It's a really simple addition that lets people peer into their spell list and really think a little bit outside the box about what each spell can do. Isn't that what the game is about anyway, thinking outside the box? That's my argument for improvising spells. Okay, next, number four, inspiration as a result of failure. I hate giving out inspiration as a means of reward for good RP because, well, Brennan Lee Mulligan puts it really well here when he talks about how it affects other players. If I started to reward good role playing, what happens in the times where I don't? What if someone has a scene where they're, they do a heartfelt thing and for whatever reason, I like don't deem that scene worthy. Instead, it might be more fun to have your players think on their past experience and how that's going to affect them in the future. When a character fails badly or is gravely injured, ask if they can think of a lasting effect this might have on their character. If their idea is good, grant them inspiration for it. It could be a scar that might remind them to be more careful next time, or maybe getting laughed at by townspeople might make them rethink their actions in the future. These are all good ways to get your players to engage with their characters such that they're not feeling like there is a repetitive nature to this game. Lastly, the fifth home rule isn't actually a home rule. It's a full redo session zero. Revisiting your campaign and changing things about it can actually re-spark that interest in the world and get your players on board. This is a fix for the bigger issues where a lot of inattention is happening at the table, a lot of distraction, and a lot of disinterest. Sometimes it might be better to decide to start a whole new campaign. And that's cool. Remember, it's not that the old campaign was bad or the way you were doing things was bad, but rather that your group just really needs to shake things up every once in a while. It's not a problem. And once you're kind of sick of the new campaign, you can go back to the old one and freshen things up again. I think the thing to remember is to take it a little bit easier when it comes to inattentiveness. Don't be the DM that makes people put their phones away or close out all social media while you're playing because some people actually need that to stay focused. As a DM, you want to allow their minds to wander when they need to and encourage those minds to wander to the character sheet or some aspect of the play material. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.